Welcome into my studio. On this demonstration I'll be drawing droplets on vibrant petals. Okay, so I'm starting off with some buttercup pastel matte paper. That's a, a colour I use very infrequently. It's not one of my favourite um, colours. When I'm doing wildlife I'm normally using mid-tones, so the greys and the browns. So it's a nice change for me. And I only really use these um, lighter colours or even the, the light grey which is almost white when I'm doing things like flowers when I want really punchy colours and lots of light showing through. Now all you're seeing on screen is me just blocking in with a pastel stick and putting that orange in so that's going to be the petals and you can see these little circles showing up. Now originally I thought I would um, perhaps do this in a different way so I've used some transfer paper white and I've indicated where the droplets were going to be. But after some testing on scrap paper or on a, a small piece of this colour pastel mat, I tried different um, techniques, different ways of creating these droplets. Some of those techniques worked, some didn't. And I found that in this case, the best way for me to do the droplets, to create that realism I was after, was just to put a base colour in, which is what you're seeing now, as I'm going in with uh, the softer pastels, blend all that and then pretty much freehand the droplets on top. So those little circles that you're seeing on screen, they're all going to be pretty much wiped away as I, I do the blending. But it does show you that graphite paper can act kind of as a resist as well. So that's obviously something to always keep in mind um, in future. So basically, the colours blocked in just using clean fingers now to blend those in. Now the petals are it's large petals you only see in say one or two or three in in this demonstration and they're very indistinct but they are going from bottom left to top right so that's pretty much the way I'm blending most of the time so any of those lines that you can now see um, in there where the color changes are that's going in the correct direction for the petals. I'm just going to um, add another layer here and there, adjust those colours slightly, but I'm not I'm not um, going too crazy on the detail of the petals. The demonstration is mainly focusing on the water droplets. So I'm showing you the technique and you can then go ahead and apply those in different colours to any other subjects. I'm just putting in some of this deep red and that's basically the um, shadows that separate in the petal, the petals, the edges. So it says quite abstract, the petals themselves, virtually no detail in them. Now pastel mat does allow me to, to put on um, a lot of layers. It'll allow layers to go on top of each other. If you're using something like uh, ongre paper or ingress, some people call it, you're not going to be able to, to do this because it's not going to allow those layers. So don't go cutting corners um, with different papers. Make sure you've got a paper that's got a textured surface. So UART would also work, Ampersand would work, and um, then you'll be able to, able to layer just like this. Okay, so I'm using some glassine paper. That's just there for, to rest my hand on. I'm going to start with some of the smaller droplets. You can see I'm going in with a, a red. It's only just darker than the under layer. I'm just putting a bit of the outline in. It's a bit darker on top. That's the uh, characteristics of these droplets. Along the bottom, we've got a lighter area. I'll just get the, the shadow area in first. So we've got dark at the top dark at the bottom. You'll see this a lot more when I start to do the, the larger droplets. The highlight at the bottom, so that's going in with an orange. I'm using lighter strokes then as I'm coming to the top, that's blending it a little bit. And then right at the very bottom I've got a little zing of lightness. Just blend that a bit more, just using that orange. Just a little touch on the bottom again. I 
and it only becomes a droplet when you put the highlight in. So a real spot of bright white on the top in that darker section and there's your droplet. Simple as that. Now the secrets are um, not to go in with too dark a colour for the outline so doing something like a black would be a, a big mistake. It needs to be in keeping with the colour of the petal. So there's a small circle again a bit of shadow on the bottom, a bit of shadow on the top. A bit of the lightness at the bottom. So you know that highlight, the little white dot at the top, the light is shining through there and lighting up the bottom of the droplet. blend in that lighter tone and then I'll move on to the next one do a couple of these let's go even smaller perhaps another one here because these are so small there's not much detail in them at all Same process, bit of the highlight orange at the bottom, and now let's put it, those little bright highlights just catching the top to make them water droplets again. So that's really quick and easy to do. Just going to put a few lines in just to represent some some texture, some small creases actually on the petals. As I said, this is really all about the, um, the droplets. They should be a bit lighter here at the bottom where we've got the sunlight is um, catching that central part of the petal more. So I'm just putting that in first before I put any more of the droplets in place because it's going to be too difficult to do these around them and just blending in that same direction again just lightly blending okay let's do some larger droplets larger ones exactly the same process just a bit more detail I'm not going to put the droplets over the whole of um, this paper just showing you the techniques. So we have another three by there. And you can go as complicated with this as you want. You can start to add um, even more subtle colors. You could use uh, things like perhaps rose leaves, which would be more um, green usually, or have a lot more colors in them. So you could really go to town with um, the details in that and the the uh, small veins going through the petals and leaves. But I wanted to keep this quite simple. So these are darker elements. Lighter at the bottom, blending it a little bit, blending it with the pencil. So just going lighter and lighter with my touch. light zinging at the bottom again. Got to make sure I've got that in pretty much the right position there. Blend in a bit more with that orange which helps to soften it again. And then our little highlights on top where I'm pushing quite hard. There's actually two little highlights on these ones. And then one on this one. And there you go, there's another three little droplets. So let's do one a lot bigger. And now because it's much larger, I can put more details in there. So I'm going fairly round. 
I left a little section at the bottom because that's going to have a bright highlight in there. I don't want too much contamination or, or too many layers of pasta when it's going to be uh, much brighter. If I was doing this with large droplets and there was going to be um, color changes in there, big color changes, or it was going to be substantially brighter, I would have either done it like this and then used a uh, putty rubber or some blue tack to lift some of that pastel back off in the droplet or I would have um, left the area without pastel in there. You can see I'm using a much darker ready purple color. Now I didn't ha actually, even in my sets, getting a very dark red seems to be pretty much impossible. So I'm having to use this this purple, you can see I'm just blending a little bit there. And I'll do the same at the bottom and then I'll use my red over the top of it. So I couldn't really go dark enough. Now I could get the colors in the soft pastels, but then I'd lose control. I wouldn't be able to get a sharp point in those. So this was pretty much um, the next best alternative. So you can see I'm using small rounded strokes. Because it's a larger droplet, it, it is obviously raised up higher from the surface of the petal so I'm, I needed to go darker and that gives it as you'll see in the end the impression of it um, being a lot more contrasty as well a lot more vivid so once again we've got a real zing of highlight here and that's where it's actually the light is going out of the droplet and then I've got this circular bright area at the bottom. I'm just going to blend that in then or put a bit more down. Then I can come back in with the orange. If I just put the orange down it wasn't going to be bright enough. And actually in this case we've got some yellow in there first. Then I'll come in with the orange. So you can see a lot brighter on this larger droplet. very lightly now here as I'm working my way up into the red because these droplets can act like little magnifying areas as well so you do get to see sometimes enlarged or more pronounced texture through them of petals and leaves which can be quite interesting as well to incorporate. Just softening that edge there on that bottom highlight. A bit more red at the top, so just some small fine adjustments. As I said, if I'd had a darker red, I would have actually used that in the shadow and along the top, so it would have you know, lifted it a bit more, it would look even more punchy. bit more orange down the bottom so that's getting quite close it's surprising how these droplets look nothing at all until we start to put these highlights in and then all of a sudden they come to life and in this one we've got some bounced highlights some little areas of texture going in all add into that extra bit of realism So almost like a marble and that would be exactly the same technique. Just darkening that top section and this shadow area. Okay so that's showing you the technique of the small droplets and the larger droplets. 
I'll just speed up the, the video now so you can see me putting a few more in. Okay, so back down to real time speed. Just so you can see one last time how I put some of these larger droplets in. So going in with that darker purple color first. Just laying that in, then I can put the red on top to make it um, more suitable to the, the color of the petals. Then we've got that zing of highlight down the bottom. It's actually going out into the shadow and it's very bright on this one. Then we also got a highlight area as usual on the bottom section of the droplets. Now this is a larger droplet again so I can get in even more detail with this magnifying as I mentioned before inside and lots of highlights are bouncing around in there. So it's given that even more interest and that will become then naturally the centre of interest.
and that dot of highlight brings it all to life again. So I'll just just do a bit of refinement here. I've got some yellows and oranges bouncing around and being reflected. And now exactly the same technique on that bottom one. So I hope you're enjoying watching me draw in these droplets and you have a go yourself. They're really cool to do and don't take long at all. Because this is quite a small drawing or the areas I'm doing is quite small, you can see I'm using the pencils more to blend with. If, I've, if I'm going in with my fingers, they got a tendency then to, to smudge it all out and I'm losing the edges. And you see some people, artists, when they're doing these um, droplet drawings, type drawings, they're actually working very, very large in order to be able to get that detail. So I think I'll just do a couple more down the bottom and um, I think that's enough then for this demonstration. Okay, so this is the final one, same technique.
got the blending with the orange going in coming up into the red my white highlight dot we're pushing quite hard on that sharp pencil a few dots in the in the droplet as well that light bottom and then I'll just touch up a couple of areas on the other droplets where they need perhaps a little bit more of a punch a little bit of tidying up perhaps as well or a darkening area And that's just about it. Hope you've enjoyed this quite short demonstration. Remember, I got lots of really in-depth, many hours long demonstrations of wildlife and other subjects over on my Patreon channel. Hope to see you there real soon. If you're looking for even more great art sources, I've really got you covered. First off, I've got a Patreon channel. It's been going well over a year or so packed with around about 50 or more videos and new ones every month. Lots of the videos are uh, many hours long, so you can see they're really, really in-depth. Subjects such as um, turtles, birds, elephants, big cats, you name it, is on there. So that's my Patreon channel. And also on that Patreon channel, before I go on to something else, I've got a secret Facebook group. So only the members are actually on there. It's the most supportive and friendly Facebook group that I've ever seen. I know I'm biased, but it really is. We've got uh, four or 500 members on there and they all help each other. So that's a great added bonus that comes free with it. Also you get line art every month as well. And we've just designed a brand new companion website for it. So if you've joined other Patreons, and uh, channels and you found it very very difficult to navigate around we got this free website that comes with it all the videos are now just a single click away couldn't be any easier than it is i've also got my site jasonmorgan.co.uk lots of tutorial videos dvd discs and downloads on there and if you're struggling for reference photos for your art projects i've got some of those too i've got 900 plus on my website wildlifeart-online.com and they will be copyright free for you so you can paint and draw from them and sell your work with no copyright worries whatsoever. So hope you like those extra resources and I'll see you all again real soon.